In this episode, you're going to get five profitable techniques and approaches that you can use for AI in marketing that's going to give your content creation a huge boost. Hi, I'm Terry Brock. Thanks for joining us here on Stark Raving Entrepreneurs, where we talk about how you can use content and convert it to cash and get that moving in the right direction. I'm joined by my partner and fiance, Gina Carr. And Gina, I want to start real fast here with the first mention of what we're going to do, where we took a look, take a look at one of the things of the five we're going to call it is follow the pain. You want to determine where your people are hurting, your audience, where are they hurting? And you want to create content around identifying some solutions for that, because that's your first step. You want to know what that is, and you want to show, show some specific real world examples and results. So some specific tests. One of the things we can do with that is with surveys. You have done a lot with surveys for our stark raving entrepreneurs and for others working with your clients. Tell me a little bit about surveys, the benefits of that, and what we need to know about it. Well, thanks so much. Yes, a big part of what I'm constantly talking about is when you're thinking about marketing and getting new customers is who do you serve and what problem do you solve? Those are my two big questions. And with surveys, you can easily find out, it will really help you to find out who you serve and what problem you're solving. And so we use those at the end of our courses. We use them during uh, our program just to, to find out what, how things are going. Uh, two of my favorite tools to use for surveys these days are Google Forms. So with Google Forms, they're fantastic because they're, they're collaborative. They easily let you look at the data, the results in text form or in pie chart, uh, I mean, excuse me, spreadsheet form. So they're they're very powerful that way. They make it so that you can easily collaborate with your team members or with the people who took the survey. So that's really terrific. And then we've also recently turned on Zoom surveys so that after people leave our meetings, uh, the ones we've designated in particular for our Star Craving Entrepreneurs programs, they are immediately surveyed and they can give a quick rating and then they can give more detail if they'd like. And we're getting some gold mine results with with those surveys. Yeah, Gina, we really are. I like that because we get the feedback right away. It's right at the end of the Zoom meeting. It just pops on the screen. There it is. They have the option to take it. And one of the things I like best is it can be anonymous. So that way, if someone says, eh, I didn't care for the oodly boodlies that you did because they didn't like oodly boodlies or whatever, you know, they put that in there. Well, we can go in there and we can realize, ah, people said that they're going to be more likely to talk about that. And I think that's good. Another way we found that has worked really well is when you start talking to people. Now, I know that sounds kind of silly. Some people think, well, what do you mean talking to people? Well, too often people want to talk to people. They want to start telling them, Look, I did this and I did that and I'm doing so well at this and then, and it's all about themselves. What you want to do is you want to talk to them and you want to ask a lot of questions. I love the way my buddy Chris Brogan talks about it. He says, we need to grow bigger ears. Listen more. Listen to what people are looking at, how they're doing it, and the kind of things that are possible there where they are hurting. Now, another thing that we can do with this is looking at some online research. Gina, I know you have done a lot with this as well. With chat GPT perplexity, tell us a little bit about what you've experienced and any cautions you've seen in that. Well, I'm constantly using these tools, especially perplexity, to ask questions about all sorts of things. Uh, my per professional life as well as in my personal life, it's giving me a lot of great answers. So online research, uh, you can ask it a lot about what your target audience is thinking, what problems they're experiencing, and you will be shocked to see how how accurate the results are. Yeah, they can be very accurate. I think it's good we go back and we take a look at them to find out what's there. Now, another thing that we can do is take a look at, here's a clever one that we have discovered in our Stark Raving Entrepreneurs. We do breakout rooms. We have a meeting where we talk about something that's very important. We have a special guest come in or we talk about it ourselves. Gina might present something. I might present something. And then we go into breakout rooms where they have groups of two to three, maybe four and get a chance to really go in depth on it. What did you like about this? What did you not like about it? And then when we come back to the general session, we are saying things like, okay, what did you cover in your group that was very important? What did you discover? What kind of things are there for uh, what's going on and how you can use this? There's a lot of capability there. And so that's something you don't wanna neglect. Look into the possibilities of that. 
Now, there's another way you can do it that I love to do this incredibly well. I know, Gina, you have done a lot with this as well, is like looking at Reddit, where people can express some uh, real personal opinions. Tell us what you've discovered with that. Well, because of Reddit's organization, in you can go into subreddits and you can really drill down on a very specific topic with people who are extremely knowledgeable. So they're giving a lot of answers. Sometimes they're wrong, but they're still giving answers of, of what they think and, and what solutions are to different problems. And you can also hear directly from the people who are having those problems who are asking their questions. So taking those answers, you it, they can really help you craft some powerful content uh, in the form of your posts, social posts, your videos, as well as for courses and other programs that you would want to create. Yeah, very important. I think this is good so we can tap into that. Now, there's one other thing we want to tell you about that can be really good. I just used this recently for a presentation I made as a professional speaker, speak to a lot of different groups. I was speaking to a particular group of people who were working with delis and bakeries and a lot that's going on there. So I went over to uh, Perplexity. Perplexity gave me a list of uh, items of what's going on in their industry. And I asked it, what's going on for the rest of the year? So as we the meeting was in June, and I wanted to know, okay, for the second half of the year, what's going on? What's hot that we might not know about right now? You can bet they were very interested in that. So what I did is I just got that, made it into a Google Doc for them, and gave it to them. So they had that, boy, they love that. And this is something that can be really, really important. So you want to take a look at all those kind of things. Now, there's a second thing you can do also to really start getting um, in tune with what you want to do and things, things that you don't want to do. First of all, I recommend that you be yourself. Be yourself. Be there as the authentic you. I often say you need to you eyes it. In other words, you got to make it you and be personal rather than it being from AI. Make sure that it's your style, your voice, your way of doing things. And you want to make sure that as you do it, well, you're authentic. That's going to be one of the most important parts of it and being able to uh, do that. And also another very important thing, we know this from the world of professional speaking, don't steal others' material. Don't take stuff from them. Make sure that you've got it. And if you are going to quote them, that's good. That shows you've done your research. Make sure you attrib uh, attribute that attribute or you attribute. Yeah, I'll say attribute that to them and make sure that it's uh, really good. And what you want to do is uh, be careful what people I saw. when I Years ago, I started, there was a prominent speaker. Many of you will know Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar was just one of the best speakers around. I consider him a friend. And I had a chance to talk with him, interview him. We were both in the Speaker Hall of Fame and uh, received the cabot from the National Speakers Association, the highest award. He only won each year. But I talked to Zig. He talked about how we can get ahead, the great things to do. What I found interesting, though, is many people started trying to imitate Zig. He had a style sometimes he'd get on the stage and he would throw his hands out like that. It goes off the screen there when I do it here, but he would throw them out and on his knees and he would make a point. And he did it in a way that was profound, very professional. It looked great. It endeared him to the audience. Many other people tried to do that themselves. And the problem is when they did it, we just realized, come on, you're just trying to be like Zig and don't do that. What you want to do is do your own thing. And speaking of that, Jen, I want to get your thoughts on this as well. Something that I had been talking about a lot, and I think you would agree with me on this. What we want to do is you want to you eyes it. What I mean by that is you want to, if it's you, Gina, you want to gina eyes it. If it's someone named Mary, you want to mary eyes it. Or John, will john eyes it. For me, Terry, I like to terry eyes it. Oh, sounds kind of fun on that. But Gina, tell me what your thoughts are on that and what that means. Well, it's something that we've been talking about for quite a while with our community members and our clients. And people seem to really pick up on it. You eyes it. Okay, yes, I'm going to make it my own. I have this generic AI content, how can I make that generic AI content, which often is very good information, but how can I add my own story, my own experience, something that's much more personal to me, and then use that as sort of a, use the AI as a frame around it. Uh, but the bulk of it is you, your, your own experience and how that relates to the problem you're solving. Yes, absolutely. Now, here's another one, too. What you want to do is you want to look at something of our friend Sally Hogshead, who's also a Speaker Hall of Fame member. She says, different is better than better. 
What does that mean? Well, as Sally explains it very well, she says, you want to make sure that you're not just better than someone because then you get into a competition. Well, you were good at this, but I was that much better, a little bit better. Rather than that, you want to say, whoa, completely different, which gives you a whole different advantage of how to look at someone. This person is a person that is different and they're really good at what they're doing. Think of a way you can do that in the work that you're doing. And that kind of relates to another thing called a category of one. Gina, what are your thoughts on the category of one and what that means? Well, a category of one is where people think of you when they have that problem that only you can solve, and it's for your perfect target audience, they will think of you. You are the category of one, the one that can solve that problem for those people. And so you want to be top of mind in that. And so that's one of the things that you can do with the content you're creating and getting out of the out into the world. And one of the reasons that you're creating this content and getting it out into this world is so that people know that you are the one to con to contact when they have this problem or when they hear of someone who has the problem. Yeah, I think so. Gina, you raise a very good point there. It's like you're the one, the category one. It's like there's only one to it. We got to get her. She is the best on that anywhere. And then there's another area that can be really important. When you're building your content, you're putting it out there, make sure that you include those very important CTAs. That's the calls to action. When it is in some way for you to connect with the audience and provide extra value for them, you want to make it easy for them to do business with you. What you really want is that combination of business where it's affordable for them, profitable for you, and everyone wins. That's really what the free market system is all about. When we talk about live and let live, that's what it is. It's the idea you do what you want to do. Don't harm others. Don't take their stuff. Peacefully do that. And you're going to provide some way for them to get value. And having a call to action makes a lot of sense. You've got something there. What you want to do is a formula that's worked well. Gina, I want you to tell us a little bit about this more because you know what we're talking about here. It's an opportunity to find out more for something that is free. Now, that sounds good, but tell me a little bit more about that and what your experience has been. Well, sometimes it can be totally free, such as you suggest they watch another one of your videos or that they read an article that doesn't require any sort of an opt-in. So that's free. Let's just call it free, free. But then there's also free, but you do need to give your email address. And that's what we call in the marketing business an opt-in, uh, often called a lead magnet. So this might be a quiz or a survey or some sort of a really juicy resource that complements whatever it was that was talked about in the video or in the uh, content so that they want to get that in exchange for their email address. So those are a couple levels to get people to take a call to action. Certainly you can ask for something more direct such as joining you on an event or even buying a ticket for something or, or buying into a program, but Often in these sorts of public um, levels of content, you're going to want to keep it free, uh, maybe invite someone for a discovery call. That's a very popular option with our thought leaders. Yeah, I think that's really good because, Gina, what it is, you're getting someone in. It's part of the steps they go through. They get the free information. They get a chance to know you. And then what they do is they know about you. They kind of like that as well. They go, hey, I know her. I like her some stuff. And they do that as they go through. So you know and they like you. Then they begin to trust you. And as they trust you more, they're going to do it. Content marketing is the way to do that. We've heard about this kind of procedure that know, like, and trust for years, for decades, probably even longer. But it's still relevant today. But now content is one of the best ways to do that. And one of the ways we want to do that is to help you and give you a lot of different uh, areas that you can use. We've got our own AI tools for biz that will be coming available for you. And we're going to be talking about that at the end. Some of you might seen, have seen that and used it already. It gives you a lot of capability to find out about these. So stay tuned to the end of this video. We're going to show you how to get that. But I want to tell you about another thing that's possible. And that is asking people for a discovery call. This is where someone is interested in you, they're interested in the services you have, a discovery call for a short period of time, 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, whatever you might want. You talk to them either over the phone or a Zoom call, and you find out what it is they're going through. What are their challenges? How can you help them given the tools that you have, the resources you have, what you know, and how you're going to be able to help them out? 
you're able to do that. And that discovery call gives you the ability to do it in a really, really nice way. And then number five, we're giving you the five steps here, is standing out in your content in a favorable way. This is really important. And Gina, I know you have covered a lot with that about how to stand out, how to do it right, using some different tools. Tell us a little bit about how you have seen that work effectively. Well, I think uh, a big part of that today is creating video. And certainly YouTube is a great platform for that. I know there are a lot of other platforms where you can post videos and, and there's good reasons to, to do that. But gosh, uh, you, YouTube is so powerful and has such a long, long tail, such as people may be looking at this video weeks or years after we've recorded it because it's still relevant to content creators who want to convert their content into cash. These are ways to stand out. So uh, because of YouTube's search engine, that makes it possible and more likely that they're going to see a video like this years down the road than they would on another platform, which is their algorithms. Uh, let's say Facebook and LinkedIn, the algorithms are very much geared to what's happening now or what's happened just now. So that that's one of the reasons that, um, that I think creating video as your main point of contact and then um, amplifying the content from the video in numerous different ways, trickling out through the different platforms to drive people back to the video is a, a great strategy and what we've done for ourselves as well as our clients. Yeah, I think that's very good. I agree with you, Gina, on that. And I think one of the things you want to do is make it you. Again, we're talking about UIzing it. I mentioned before, use that. And one of the ways you can do that is use your vocal tone, who you are, the way you do it, the little quirks where it's funny and appropriate, use that. And you don't have to be funny. You can do it if you want, or you can make a point, but just be you, be genuine and authentic and bring in some B-roll. That can help as well. You want to make sure that it's uh, aligned with what is uh, on the screen and it's something that they can use. And then I would say also, uh, as we wrap up these uh, particular five points, provide the research. This sets you apart from others. You can do it very easily now. I use perplexity and I use the academic and Wolfram technologies that they have built in there for the focus. You go into perplexity, ask for focus, and you can look at academic research. That way you can say, not only do I think this, and not only do I think this is a good idea, but a recent study was done at the University of Oogity Boogity with Professor Smith and Professor Jones, and they found that A, B, and C. And also another university over here, Eagly Weagly's and Professor Johnson and Rackintosh, they came up with this idea, et cetera, et cetera. This adds credibility to who you are. And so with perplexity, you can do that for free and able to uh, make it work really, really well. So a lot of good stuff there that are available that you can tap into and start using to move ahead. Gina, any final words you want to say before we uh, move on to that special gift that we're going to don't leave right now, but the special gift we're going to give you. Gina's got a few words. What would you say as we look at all of these together? Well, friends, I, th I think that Terry has just given you a great example of how to UIze it with his University of Oogly Boogly and his Iggly Wiggly and, and his facial expressions and all that he's doing. So this is a great example of how to put your personality into the video and make it your own. I don't think you're going to find University of Oogly Boogly on uh, chat GPT or perplexity. It might not be there. Yeah, I don't Unless think you be. ask it. Unless you ask it to create it in the voice of Terry Brock. Yeah, I guess you could do that. <laughs> so I could. So you see, this is what creating is all about. It's what it takes for succeeding today, how you can get ahead and what you can do. And this way you get some solid repeat business as you're using to turn content into cash. That's the key. Content to cash is what we're all about here at Stark Raving Entrepreneurs. And we've got some extra videos for you that are coming up. And matter of fact, what we want to do is give you some extra goodies. We told you about that uh, tool that we have. Well, first of all, you can find out about that at StarkRavingEntrepreneurs.com. Come on by there. And on the video here, like this, please like it and share it and subscribe to this because then that tells the algorithms, hey, people like this kind of stuff. And it'll say you like it. So you get to hear even more of that. Stark Raving Entrepreneurs is the place to go. And here's where you find out about the AI goodies that we promised you. This is cool. And we keep changing and adding more goodies to this all the time. Go to AIToolsForBiz.com. And that's all in lowercase, AITools, the number four, 
B-I-Z.com. Those of you catching this on video, you'll see we got a QR code there for you. And if you're not, hey, you're going to be able to catch all kinds of good information on Canva, on Dolly 3 for creating the images, Chat GPT. Matter of fact, Chat GPT is we're recording this for O is incredible. That's Omni. O, not zero, but O is in Omni. Lexica Art, great place to get good art. Nudely is a great place where you could have an AI speech coach help you to get better. You got an important interview coming up or a presentation coming up online or not online. You can use Udly to get a lot more information on that. Also, we talk about AI, open AI and stable diffusion. So a lot of good stuff in there for you that we want to give you. And we're going to give you even more. Here's a QR code. I know you got your phone with you. You can do that. Those of you are catching this on video, there's the QR code. You can pause this, jump over there and grab it for free. No charge whatsoever. This is our lead magnet. This is our tool that we let you have. So you get a chance to know us and you get a chance to get on our newsletter that way. And if you think, hey, I don't need this anymore, you can opt out very easily and quickly. And another thing we want to give you as a final gift, some videos here that are going on right now. You see that you want to watch these. They're going to help you to accomplish the kind of things that you want and to achieve those goals. For Gina Carr, this is Terry Brock, and I want to thank you for being with us today. We look forward to seeing you here again.